All right, so we left off over here in the payment component. We have our placeholder, which is letting us know that we're in the component, but as you can see, there's nothing in it. So the goal of this video is, is to set up our UI, which is gonna be very simple. All we're gonna have is two radio buttons, one for PayPal and one for Stripe, okay? So very simple, but we're gonna focus on the UI. So let's go over here to our payment component, which we set up um, in the last video. Go ahead and remove this placeholder. And below, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up, uh, we're gonna set up a div. This and this will be the container. And then below this container, we'll have the row and a column. So let's start off with the row. And then we'll get our column. And this will span eight columns total. So we'll do column MD8. Okay. And for the container, we're going to make this, give it a border. We're going to give it a border. And we're going to do a padding up top and bottom of four. As a matter of fact, you know what, what we can do is this, because ultimately what we want to do is we want it to look identical to, to this one here in the shipping component as well, really all of these here, the shipping payment and place order, they're going to look very similar in, 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 in many cases. So we can go to the shipping component. So we're going to go here and open up our shipping component and take a look here. Okay, so for the container, we also see we have a border and a padding up top and bottom of four. Go ahead to our payment component and paste that in. Let's go here, let me drag this here. All right, so let's go back to the shipping, see what we have for the row. For the row, we have justify content center. And go ahead and paste that in here. Let's go back to the shipping and see what we, yep. For the column, that's exactly what we have. Okay, we can go ahead and copy this here. And we'll paste that right inside, under, right inside our column. Save that. And we'll just make a change here. Instead of shipping details, we'll call it payment. Save that. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. All right, so if we make a comparison from payment and shipping, we see it's identical, all right? So far, so good. All right, so now we wanna set up our form with our two radio buttons. So next, we're gonna go here, yeah, we'll go underneath here, and we'll set up our form. And we're gonna start off with our first radio button. Give this a class name of form form check and then below that inside we'll provide our first input field which is going to be our radio button we'll do a class name of form check form check input form check input and we're going to give it a type of radio it's going to be a radio button. Let's get, we can give it a name of payment method. And then the value is going to be PayPal. Okay. And then underneath that, let's go ahead and save that so we can format it. Then below that input, we're going to provide a label. And this is going to be PayPal. Provided a class name of form check label. All right, and these are all bootstrap classes, in case you were wondering. So if we save that, let's go ahead and see what we get. All right, so you see we have our first radio button for PayPal.
Okay, so essentially we can do the same thing for have the same for Stripe. So we can go ahead here, copy what we have for our PayPal and paste it below. And just make our changes here. The name is gonna the name is gonna be the same, but the value for this one is gonna be stripe. And the label will be stripe. Also save that and see what we get. All right, good. There we go. All right, next, let's go ahead and set up our button below. Uh, below. So this button will be right over here. We'll give it a class name of BTN, BTN primary. And we'll give it a margin top of three. I'm going to go ahead and call this button continue. Save that. All right, and we get our button. All right, so let's go back to the shipping and just see how they look very similar. All right, there we go. So we got our two radio buttons. Obviously, we don't have like, um, we need to add our our state level logic, right, for the component state and also for Redux state. But for now, as I mentioned, we just want to deal with the UI. Okay, so next, um, let's see. Another thing I want to do here is I actually want to provide, give some breathing room to this uh, Jumbotron here, which contains our breadcrumb. So I want to give it some breathing room on the top, bottom, and also the, the sides, the left and the right. So what we'll do, but not just for this, but also for um, the shipping component as well. So let's go ahead and start with the shipping component. If we go to the top here, the outermost container here uh, for the section we'll give it a class name and do a margin of four which will get all sides top bottom and left and right save that and see what we get for shipping all right good all right so let's do the same thing for the payment section so I'm going to continue and let's do the same thing for this one here so we're going to the payment component do the same thing and give it a class name margin of four save that see what we get all right that's much better all right so that looks good all right so uh another thing okay so let's see here all right so we did set up the ui all right so for this last thing here, I say initialize shipping address in Redux Reducer. Okay, now what that means is that here, if you notice, we actually had values that were stored here, but, and as I mentioned in the earlier video, that the idea was that if we, if the user wanted to come back to the shipping component, go back, whatever the information they had previously should be already pre-filled here. But as you can see, it's, it's gone. All right, and we're gonna resolve this issue. And uh, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna have to go to the reducer for our order. So let's go ahead and collapse this components, go to Redux, and we're gonna go to the order reducer. And if we look at the initial state, it does set it to uh, it, the shipping address is empty. Okay, but we have to do, we actually have to do something more. We have to set up a condition here. We're going to check if, if the local storage of get item, so, or actually let me explain here. Let me open up my dev tools to explain this. Go to application. All right. Oh, well, this is currently empty. But what it's going to do is, is for Redux is Redux is going to check first. If this thing is empty, if 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 this is empty, then it would it, Redux is also going to be empty. But if we have a value here, then we're going to use this value that's in local storage and and fill it in with uh, 
and, and fill it into our Redux state as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if local storage get item, which is the shipping address. Shipping address again is this thing right here. If there's a value there, if it's not empty, then what we're going to do is we're going to say initial state dot shipping address. And we're going to give it the value of JSON dot parse and get whatever value is contained in the local storage for this thing, just like so. Otherwise, if there's nothing in the local storage for the shipping address, then we're just going to essentially keep it like this, keep it empty. So we're going to do initial state dot shipping address equals just an empty object. OK, so this should resolve the issue of coming back here and then into the shipping component and then finding that the fields are not pre-filled and in, in, in having it empty. So what we're going to do here to test this out is we're going to go ahead and delete. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, that's OK. All right, so we're going to have to start over here. Um, all right, no problem. We're going to log out. Um, I don't, don't delete this. All right, so currently, our, let's delete everything from our local storage and cookies. All right, so everything in local storage and cookies is empty. Our card is empty, so let's just start from scratch. All right, so going home, let's go ahead and get our, let's do the turkey burger, add to cart. Okay, we have the cart item here. We want to check out, proceed to check out. Since we're not signed in yet, it's going to force us to sign in. We're going to sign in, and then it does redirect us to the shipping. All right, so if we go here to the, to local storage, we see we've got the cart here and the user. Uh, and the cookie here with the token. All right, now let's go ahead and fill in the shipping details. So we'll do one, two, three, Main Street, two, two, two. Let's do Orlando, Florida. Then one, one, two, two, three. Do continue. And then now you see we get the shipping address here in the local storage added. And if we go to the Redux store, we should have that information as well. Go into the order, we get the shipping shipping address details here. Okay, so now at this point, if we were to go back to shipping, all that information should still be available, already pre-filled for us. So we continue, and there you go. All right, so now we have our payment section set up with the UI for our payment method, either PayPal or Stripe. Okay, I will see you guys in the next video.